FIDE have just organised another Olympiad, this time for people with disabilities. This tournament gives more players with disabilities the opportunity to compete at an international event and it gives a voice to disadvantaged people uh, and it helps them earn recognition by representing their country. And in the end, there were 61 teams playing from 45 different countries, which for a first time running the event, well, I think FIDE did a good job. Chess is an inclusive sport. Anyone can play. It's all about ideas. It doesn't matter where you're from, how old or how young you are, what your gender is. It doesn't matter how you look or what side of town you're from doesn't matter what language you speak, chess is an international universal language in itself. You know, what you manage to play on the chessboard is what counts. And in that sense, I think chess is a truly unique medium. And that inclusivity is one of the things that I think I'm, I'm really proud of about my YouTube channel. When I look at the stats, I can see that we have viewers from literally every corner of the globe. And yeah, I think I'm, I'm really proud of that. So, you know, we've managed to create a community. So I support FIDE's initiative to uh, make the chess world even more inclusive and diverse. And they're hoping to run this Olympiad every two years, which sounds good to me. So Gazprom have sponsored a brilliancy prize. Um, well, as they did with the the, uh, the general online Olympiad in the summer. And I'm, I've been asked to be one of the judges and this is my choice of game. Um, I, I always feel that for a brilliancy prize, there sh it, it should be literally that. It should have brilliance, it should have sparkle. So it should have some kind of, uh, you know, something artistic about it and I think this game qualifies very well. So it was played in the match between North Macedonia and Kyrgyzstan and the player of the white pieces is Vladimir Turkolyanov and black was Irina Ostri from Kyrgyzstan. So here we go. E4 from white and it quickly goes into a Sicilian and it's an open Sicilian, and this is the Khan variation. And white plays very sensibly, knight c3, queen c7. It's a very flexible setup for black. Bishop d3, of course, that's uh, a dangerous square for the bishop, which potentially points at black's kingside. And now knight c6. I think this looks like a good move because it sort of exploits the fact that the bishop is on d3, a wonderful square, but now white has to do something about that knight on d4. Bishop e3, developing a piece and protecting the knight. Knight e5. Well, already after just eight moves, we have actually quite a double-edged situation because black is moving that knight again and is falling behind the development. You can see that white has already castled. Now, you know, I would be perhaps tempted to play h3 here to cover that g4 square. There are always so many tricks on this diagonal in the Khan variation. But white pressed on with f4. And now it starts to get highly tactical. Knight g4. Hitting the bishop, and the bishop drops back to d2. Now bishop c5. Hmm. It's not just, uh, well, in fact, there are two diagonals which are potentially weak. So the knight needs supporting, knight e2. Now e5. Oh, the pressure increases. Hitting the knight on d4 and opening up this diagonal. And this doesn't look bad for black. Mating one threatened with queen h2 and the knight on d4 is threatened as well. It doesn't look as though white's opening has turned out very well, but 
watch what happens now. In fact, if I go back a move, black has an extraordinary move in this position. D5 is actually okay for black. An amazing move, actually. Um, if Well, pawn takes knight, obviously impossible. And, well, yeah. Best idea is this for... Why? It, it, it's completely unclear. Very interesting position. Anyway, back to the game continuation. Queen takes e5, just played. But now, white played bishop f4. Mr. Turkulyanov has it under control. Hitting the queen. Bishop takes knight, check. And now king h1. So white is a piece down. But it's not so clear. Watch what happens. The queen has to move. Queen c5. Knight takes bishop. Credibly, d6 is probably the best move for black in this position. But anyway, queen takes d4. I mean, you can understand why black wanted to go in for this. Because, well, black has a piece up. There's a threat to play knight f2. What's not to like? Well... In fact, e5 turns the game around. This presents terrible problems for black. So let's see. Uh, that, I mean, one thing is that the king can't escape with castle's kingside because then bishop takes h7 check. Best idea for black here is actually to give the queen like this. There you go. And in this position, this still requires some work. This is not easy. Once that bishop reaches c6, that's a very stable position. I think white has to rely on some kingside pressure to try and break through. But that's not simple, actually. But instead, black staggered on and wanted to take more material. I should mention this is actually a rapid play game, an online Rapid play game as 25 minutes on the clock plus 10 seconds per move, as was uh, well, all that was the time control for all the games in the Olympiad. So, knight f2, white has to take, and now e takes f6, and black's king simply does not escape from this position. Um, you could try d6. But now, queen e1 check. And actually, this is crushing for white. White's going to take here. So in the game, black played queen takes bishop. And now, a very sneaky check from white. Not queen e2, but queen e1 check. So king f8 obviously loses to queen e7. So king d8. Now we take on g7. White is a whole rook down now, but there is a very cunning check. Now, this is the reason we checked on e1, to have this check available. Queen a5 check. If queen c7, queen check, and, well, it's going to be mate very soon. Oh, king e8, rook e1. So after queen a5, king e7. Now the king gets driven out into... Um, well, up the board, anyway. Now the queen drops. I mean, there's there's really no good square for, for the queen to go to. You know, white's attack is, is going to be decisive. So black played queen takes rook. Bishop takes, so now white has a queen against two rooks. But here's the point. Well, if the king miraculously managed to make its way back to its own ranks, then things will just about be okay. But this is a strong move. H4 check. This is the classic way of dealing with a king that you've managed to get up the board. Keep dragging it towards your own pieces. The classic king hunt. So here we go. Queen check. And now a couple of really nice moves to finish. King g1. The net just 
tightens around the king. And bishop e2 claiming the g4 square. And that was the final move. Queen f2, checkmate. Lovely game. Congratulations to Vladimir Trukulyanov. I don't know who uh, is going to win the prize for um, the, the, the Brilliancy Prize. Sponsored by Gazprom. But anyway, that's my choice. Thanks for watching.